say you want a revolution game. I know that I do. Revolution games. So everything that I played by this publisher in the past has been a joy to play. Um, I just believe that this publisher really has very high standards and they have a talent for uh, bringing up very good games. And games also with a very unique feel, with some mechanics that you do not find everywhere, with good ideas behind, just a solid publisher. So you can imagine how excited I was when Gazala the Cauldron showed up in my in my mailbox. Uh, this is one of the last or the latest releases. It is about World War II. It is about the campaign in Libya in uh, the spring of 1942. And it is based on the same system of Cells, another game by, uh, by Revolution, games that I played in the past and I enjoyed very much. So, pretty much, I knew that this was going to be a winner, and it is pretty much a winner. The game comes in a Ziploc bag, no fancy, no fancy boxes. This is the box. And the cover also doubles as a player aid. Uh, what can I say? I have no problem with this. If it keeps the costs of the game lower, no problem or whatsoever. Of course, if there could be an extra uh, player rate, that would never be bad. Uh, but what's printed on the back? I could. Diff it would be hard for me to care less. Uh, counters that are nice and thick. The counter holders is something that I've added. It's not in the original game as we are here. Again, look colorful, nice counters. Um, thick and durable with three pieces of information written on them. Which are... Uh, movement costs for uh, light attacks, heavy attacks, and movement costs for movement. Uh, yeah, in this game, uh, attacking is a function of movement, it takes place during movement, so simply you have different costs. When you're attacking, you're spending movement points, which actually makes the situation very fluid because uh, you may be able to move after you have attacked if you have enough movement points. Uh, this is also a chit pull game, hooray, hallelujah. Uh, this is a type of game that I like very much because it works so well in solitaire mode and this game does work well in solitaire mode because of the limited um, ability that you have to plan ahead. Um, at the same time, well, there is enough here that you do not feel that you are playing a random game. The map is very pleasant to look at, nice colors. Uh, not a million colors, but hey, this is the desert after all, so what are you looking for? What do you want? It's printed on paper, but good quality paper, I must say. Uh, the game, uh, well, uh, the Axis player is on the attack, of course. The Axis player will try to go through these minefields here, which are represented by the red dotted Texas and the Axis player um, earns victory points by occupying northern edges of the map and by controlling El Adam all the way up there. Uh, also, victory points are earned by the players for uh, destruction of enemy units. The Allied player uh, earns more points for destroying enemy units than the Axis player does. So, Allied player get in there and destroy stuff because if it's a one-to-one -one exchange you are one step ahead of the Axis player. Chit pull um, engine as I said earlier and a really smart one. Not only is this a chit pull, so chits that activate the, um, the units on the board are placed in a cup and randomly selected. Here you have two cups, so one per player and you have a mix of chits that changes throughout the game. It changes from turn to turn. Not all chits will always be available. Not only that, but there is a mix of, of uh, tactical chits which grant benefits. You can spend them to, uh, to earn benefits or simply activation chits that when you pull them will allow you to activate the corresponding information, the one described on the chit. 
um, uh, you also have an option of using activation chat to activate any one unit on the board and not necessarily the one of the formation that you selected very expensive uh, option nevertheless not only this you have another uh, thing thing the various throughout the game which is super cool which is the number of actions the number of actions that the players have available is printed on the turn track as you can see it can change dramatically from turn to turn uh, in a certain way you have more foreknowledge than uh, the players of the actual conflict the fighters in the actual conflict had you know exactly how many actions you're gonna have five months from now uh, five turns from now but so be it you just take that into account uh, definitely uh, this makes things uh, interesting because you do not know exactly how many of your chits you're going to actually be able to use uh, let me correct that you know how many that's number is printed there you do not know which ones also uh, there's a possibility that the units are activated more than once per turn uh, which is cool but again the fact that um, your mix of tactical chits do not necessarily match the number um, again, it's, it's, I keep talking about numbers. Uh, the mix of chits that you have in your cup does not necessarily tell you the units that you're going to be able to use because it all depends on uh, the ones that you will uh, draw randomly based on the number of actions that you have available. This also makes um, the action somewhat discontinuous. There are moments of more intense action, uh, moments that are more about preparation and just waiting for the bad times to be over. Um, but that nevertheless also um, adds to the game, I find it. Uh, even though the pace again is not um it's not homogeneous uh, you know that there will be times that there will there are going to be more exciting and you prepare for that um the axis player sometimes needs to to wait a little bit before a powerful offensive becomes possible and that happens when a lot of actions are overall available and of course it is also nice to have a sense of what's happening around the battlefield what's happening as the players are worried about the battlefields and their external factors that have to do with diplomacy politics supplies all sort of stuff that influences what you can actually do right there on the sands of the desert so you activate your units by pulling your little nice cute chit and then you move your units and you spend movement points which you can spend to uh, to move or to attack the nice player aid here has a table to tell the movement cost of different types of actions so actually the movement uh, the movement allowances are often pretty high 24 movement points for movement but as you can see there are a lot of things that are expensive when you are moving uh, through certain types of terrain uh, different units have different types of, of movement costs depending on how they move and then you also have um, different types of attacks light attack, medium attack and heavy attack attacks are resolved in the traditional fashion with the odds uh, ratio you divide the attack factors of the attack of the of the attackers by the defender find the right column apply modifiers roll and see the result which may be uh, a number that is the number of steps lost by the by one of the sides or it can be uh, or it can be a uh, disruption it can be um, actually the numbers are represented by asterisks it can be destruction uh, disruption it can be retreats um, there are zones of control, yes, which are pretty sticky because you cannot move directly from one zone of control uh, of the opponent to the other. There are many games in which the zone of control is a little less uh, restrictive, which of course is a pain because the ally player is going to use that against you. I don't think that the other player, the the ally player, is going to to do against you as you play as the Axis player, is to try to stop your the minefield, which of course makes perfect sense. If the ally player didn't do that, I don't know what kind of player that would be. Um, the Axis player needs to 
uh, to take time to use uh, bridge um, markers that are placed on the board and allow to create uh, passages and corridors throughout the minefields, but the presence of an opponent on the edge opposite to the one where the Axis player is trying to uh, clear a path that delays the, that delays, um, the creation of the breach. Uh, actually, I think these are the main concepts. The rule book is really quite short. It is only um, 12 pages, but if you include the uh, designer's notes at the end, a very extensive example of combat, detailed explanation of what the tactical chits do, really probably the, 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 the bone and marrow of the rules is maybe four or five pages. There are cases where there are exceptions and you have the exception to the exception, uh, but nothing really hard to manage. The game is definitely on the light side. It, it is heavily on the light side. But it is really fun to play, which is what matters the most to me. This is a game that is very tense. The um, activation chit uh, and mechanics makes things unpredictable and just grueling at times. You're waiting for the right activation, um, you are waiting for the right chit, so that may or may not come. Uh, there are moments of surprises, incredible opportunities that open, uh, opportunities that seem to be easy to grasp and never materialize. Uh, if you know the beauty of these mechanics, you will know what I'm talking about and here it is implemented very well. Um, the, the system, uh, if you played cells in the past, is even easier to learn. The tweaks that have been added here definitely added to the flavor and the historical flavor of the game, uh, in particular when it comes to dealing with those darn to those darn minefields. As you can see, somehow when I'm talking about games, I tend to talk from the perspective of the Axis more than that of the Allies. I don't know what that really says about me, but so be it. I see the minefields as a darn pain in the neck rather than a wonderful system to protect uh, myself. I don't know. Uh, it's a good game. It's a really good game. Um, fun action, tense action, tough decisions, um, different ways that you can go about approaching the situation as the Axis player. Maybe this is why I tend to identify with the Axis side. I just find the things a little, mm, a little tougher and more exciting. You have to set up the attack and the LA player to an extent has to uh, prevent what you're going to do, has to respond to what you're going to do. But in a certain way, the, the, the weight, the responsibility of the overall uh, of the role situation is, is in your hand. As the, play, as the Axis player, you need to, uh, to design the architecture of your attack. Again, um, moments of tension that may be then um, uh, interrupted or uh, just uh, been intersped by moments that are a little more like of build-up or reconstruction, uh, but that works too thematically. Uh, it works very well to me that there is that sort of like this continuous pace in desert warfare. Um, fun. Fun game. Revolution Games really has given us some very good games in the past and to me um, Gazala the Cauldron is no exception whatsoever. I highly recommend this game to anyone who has an interest in World War II, uh, in the North African campaign in particular, or just anyone who wants to play a fun, intense and definitely easy to approach war game.